What's up y'all? My name is Barbara Atu. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, it is another Sew It Be project, but it is the last tapestry blanket themed one. All right. So I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Please forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and let's begin. All right. So I got commissioned to make a bomber jacket and y'all know that I've already done the sweater. I've already done the puffer jacket. I'm like, okay, this won't be the last one because girl, I don't want it to be too repetitive, but I am now accepting orders because before I was like, mm, I don't feel like doing that. You know what I mean? Like I was very nervous about accepting orders, but now that I feel comfortable, we're going to put the show on the road. You know what I mean? All right, so all the products I used, everything from the blanket where I got it from, every single tool that I used will be linked down below in the description box. But we are just cutting the fabric, you know, cause we gotta make the pattern. I mean, we're using a pattern. How do I explain it? We are cutting it out to sew. There we go, yeah. <laughs> we're cutting everything out to, um, so it's sewed. Um, I like to upsize, how do I explain it? I like to upsize where I'm, the, the cut of the fabric so that I have enough seam allowance to wear um, it's not too tight of a fit this allows me to like be more like how do I explain it have more room to do what I need to do to create the pieces and I always make sure that I get like a large enough of the fabric size so that like if there's a mistake we can get it fixed with no hiccups you know what I mean All right, so I forgot to show y'all this in the previous clip when I was cutting out the back part of the fabric, but this right here, y'all need to get it. It's a fray check. It prevents your like woven fabrics from fraying and like separating. Cause girl, I learned my lesson with the puffer jacket and the sweater that I made for my older brother. You need this in your arsenal. Even like when you're making a wig, you know what I mean? You use it to seal the wefts so that it doesn't like fall apart and you know, Ever since I discovered this, I have bought, I think I bought like four packs just to make sure that I don't run out. Cause I, I'm making um, bomber jackets for my friends as well for Christmas. So I wanna make sure that I have it in my arsenal so that, um, cause listen, trying to um, like, how do I like sa salvage? So yeah, salvage like the fabric when it's fraying, it's a lot of work, okay? So you, let, you put it on the fabric and you let it dry for about, 30 to 45 minutes and then it's like literally sealed so you can glide the scissors or um fabric cutter or rotary cutter without any issues and it'll stay intact throughout the entire sewing process all right and then now i am just cutting um the same pieces but in the lining um and then i all i didn't have it on camera but i also cut it in that in, for the batting as well so that um there's a little bit of insulation and a little bit of like puffiness, but not too much puffiness to where it's like a puffer jack. You know what I mean? All right, so now it is time to assemble all the pieces. Um, so to prevent the lining from like shifting underneath, no, to prevent the batting from shifting be between the lining and the actual tapestry fabric, um, I am, what is it called? I forgot what it's called, I'm not sure. But I wanna like secure it, so we're doing lines <laughs> um, along the um, lining part, not on the tapestry part, because again, it's not a puffer jacket, so. Um, we're doing that so that the lining is secure and doesn't shift in between the fabrics. And yeah, we're using um, Taylor's chalk, which um, fades after you throw it in the wash. So no problem about like having like stains on the inside. And then um, I'm just using that to, and I'm using, I don't know what that board is called. Is it a straight board? I'm not sure girl, I couldn't tell you, but um, <laughs> I'm using it to make sure that my lines are straight. And I did it between, I think, um, I want to say that was like 15 centimeters apart each. I don't know, but yeah, we're doing that. So we're doing like three lines and then we're sewing it all together so that it doesn't shift in the fabric. All 
All right, and in here we, I have my um, sewing machine set to the smallish, the smallest straight stitch on the um, model. It's the Singer Promise 2. Again, everything will be linked down below in the description box. Um, but yeah, just using the smallest straight stitch because I don't want to use too wide of a straight stitch because, you know, I was a little bit hesitant of the, um, what's it called? The fray check. But I don't know why. I just, I don't know. I just wanted to use a smallest straight stitch so that the tapestry will not move, okay? Because I didn't have time for it to be fraying apart while I'm sewing. So now that I know that the fray check actually works, we own, um, okay? But um, a tip if you don't have the fray check is to use um, a zigzag stitch. Now, you will have to find, the only issue about um, tapestry blankets and stuff, they do, they do come patterned and sometimes like, the color isn't the same throughout the entire blanket. So using a zigzag, zigzag stitch will make your thread more visible, but um, it's a little bit more secure than a regular straight stitch if you don't have the fray check. All right, so now it is time to assemble the jacket, okay? So we have our um, lining and batting sewn together. We're going to attach it to the fabric of the tapestry blanket and we're going to pin it and secure it. And then we're gonna grab one of the front panels and then we're gonna do the same thing with um, the front panels, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna do the same thing and we're going to attach it to the back part using the shoulders and then we're gonna sh sew the shoulders together. All right, so now it's just more sewing. We're just making, we're just assembling the jacket. Um, I'm sewing the cup of the sleeve. So where the shoulder part is, you don't wanna sew the entire sleeve first because girl, you're gonna be looking stupid. It's gonna be work, it's more work, you know? Ain't nobody got time for that. So you wanna, the order of sewing is you sew the shoulders of the front and back pieces. Then you, show the, you sew the cup of the sleeve to the shoulder of the main piece that you just sewn. And then you sew the sides and then join the sleeves okay so everything is more easier okay so what is a bomber jacket without the cuffing you know what I mean so we're doing wrist cuffs we're doing a waist cuff and we're doing a collar now the collar wasn't filmed because I started sewing that part around like midnight and I was tired so I didn't I didn't turn on the camera for that. But um, you're gonna wanna make sure that the ends of the, the open end of the waist and wrist cuff is is facing the end of the um, lining batting and tapestry fabric so that when you, un when you fold it out properly, it looks more seamless, you know what I mean? Okay, so you wanna pin it because again, the cuff fabric, I used a rib knit material. I I will find it. If I can find the link, because I bought it in store. If I can find the link, I will link it down below in the description box. Um, they have lots of colors. Y'all saw me cussing about how much it was in the store, but it's all right. <laughs> I bought enough to last me and I have to use it to make my brother's jacket because I have been slacking on that. I just haven't, I haven't done it, you know? I have been lazy, you know, but now that I have to make my friend's jackets and then my brother's jackets, it's just gonna be a whole lot of sewing, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I am sewing the, I'm sewing the sides and joining the sleeves. Um, yeah, just making sure that just the stuff is secure. All right, and then now that the sides are sewn together and the the sleeves are joined, it is time to sew the waist cuff. Again, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the wrist cuff and we're gonna have the open end of the rib material facing the um, edge of the lining batting, and fa uh, lining batting and tapestry fabric. We're gonna pin it, because again, it's a stretchy material, so the stretch of the, um, the stretch of the ribbed fabric will cinch it and give it that bomber effect look. And so what I like to do is pin one end and then pin the other end and then pin throughout the 
um, middle of the fabric so that it doesn't move or budge. All right, and then after all of that is done, we are sewing the zipper. Um, I have a zipper presser foot. I don't know how to use it, so I'm not about to stress myself out trying a, a new thing while I'm making something. Maybe I'll try it with like a sample piece just to make sure and I get like I understand what I'm doing. But just using a regular straight stitch and um, pinning, I had the zipper pinned to the fabric okay and then we're sewing it throughout and then last but not least we are using the fray check to seal the sides all i mean we're sealing all of the seams and like folds because again we don't want it to unravel all right we want everything to be secure so i let it hang for about 30 minutes um again making sure that we're going through each and every single bit i didn't show every single bit in here because girl that would have been a lot all right and then once you're done this is how she ended up looking i'm really proud of myself you know <laughs> i'm really proud of myself but yeah this is how she ended up looking again i'm accepting orders so yeah Really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. All right, bye. -bye.